All right, welcome to the show, Mastermind Family. I am your host, JoJo, and we have a very special guest today. And before we get the show started, we got to do the sound off call for the day. Mastermind Family in the building. And so today, we're just trying to provide some motivation to upcoming artists, new artists, and just allow them to be inspired by artists who are doing their thing. And just Today is artist motivation, and this is where we basically bring different artists and different creators and allow them to share you their story and how they've developed their manga or comic to be a beacon of light, hope to you guys, and just shed some motivation so you guys can finish what you guys started. And we have a very, very special guest on the show. We have Hein Zaman, and he is doing some phenomenal things. So, Hein, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thank you, Jojo. Thanks so much for having me on. Man, not a problem, man. And, um... Hi, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Just tell the people, you know, what you're about and what you're creating and what you're doing, man. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, I am an illustrator. Um, I'm working here out of Nashville. Um, and I started um, drawing when I was very young. And uh, um, I studied 3D animation, actually. But throughout that in school, I just was drawing the whole time. So, uh, when I graduated, I just kind of kept doing that and that started as you know going really well and everything so yeah. um, i kept that up and now i uh, i just get to do that all the time so um i am originally from south africa if that that's kind of a touch point but um, oh, wow. and then i moved here when i was six so i love america i'm like i've been pretty much completely americanized <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, yeah so what i what I do is, is I, uh, um, I do illustration for a lot of musical projects, so I'll do a ton of album covers. Um, I work with my brother um, in an indie record label that we have um, called Phonic Music, mm -hmm. and from there I build kind of stories and worlds for like based around the music that these artists produce. Mm -hmm. um, so, and a lot of the artist projects mirror sort of the gorillas in their st in how they how they appear to the public uh, in that they have illustrated characters that really like stand in as their avatars um, so we, we craft a lot of stories around their music and everything um, and yeah so so that's that's kind of what I do and the latest of that is um, a comic that I just finished for Vian Isaac which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, my brother so mm -hmm. It t tells yeah. a little bit, it, it, man, that's really amazing stuff that you're doing, man, a whole lot, I guess. How did you even get to that point where you're, you know, what made you want to go on that journey? Yeah, um, so what kind of, it's, what kind of got me into all of that is, so since I was very young, um, I've been world building, um, and that's kind of still what I do, and that's mostly where all my ideas come from, so, and by that I mean, um, really coming up with these ideas for like an entire world and a setting and a concept and the 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 um, purpose of it being um, how can like this setting create drama and create you know conflict and, and pull great characters out of out of like this world mm -hmm. so I, I was doing that since I was young all of what I just said about like pulling great characters out of it that's mm -hmm. like stuff I learned like before that I was just building worlds and having fun and like a very fantasy stuff like oh like moving sand dunes and like sand ships and stuff <laughs> and like yeah yeah like really really fun stuff so I was doing that even kind of right as I started learning how to draw mm -hmm. and 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 almost almost before that as well and so what got me into all of this is uh, um, is kind of my my want to express that and and get that get some of those ideas down and and, and on paper and so, so and a lot of it has been for myself so it's just like oh i want to make this because i want to see it and that's that's really it um as opposed to wanting to make it um so so that other people can see it which you learn to do as well right like, right you know that's that's very important so wow. yeah so i don't know if that answers the question but yeah yeah that's so that 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 does answer the question though um sorry for that interruption but no, uh no, no awesome i'm glad glad to answer the question and my my next question to you is 
What yes. if if you had an influence from whether it's like anime or manga or uh, comics or just mm -hmm. your culture, mm -hmm. what influenced you? So that's interesting. I, uh, um, so I got very into um, comics, reading them for a, for for a while. Um, I, I when I studied in New York um, a few years ago. So okay, um, and then I would always be kind of. Not as much into the superhero stuff. I started like dipping my my toes into that, and like um, I think I was definitely reading um, all new X Men and and some of that stuff. Uh, and right when DC launched the New Fifty Two, I was I was kind of on that. But as far as my influences, they they tend to like kind of shift more towards the fantasy realm. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest ones is Mouse Guard. Okay. Um, have you have you read Mouse Guard? Yes. Yes. Oh, I. Love Mouse Guard. They Same have, here. Um, it's super cool, and the guy who does it is super cool. He used to just do um, woodblock prints, and you can really see that in his art style. Right, so it's very beautiful. Um, and then, and just for if if you care, I do. Um, they just made a tabletop role playing game. So I'm what? Really get that. Yeah, I know it's very exciting. Um, and then some more obscure stuff. Um, IDW. I don't know if it's still going on. Um, did this series called Wild Blue Yonder? Hmm. Have you heard of it? I haven't heard of that it's one. Very beautifully illustrated. A lot of like grit and detail, which I like. Um, and it's kind of it's it's this sort of um, everybody has to live in the sky kind of world because the the Earth has been destroyed by like a nuclear winter. So everybody's like flying around on all these crazy flying machines and stuff. Ooh. Very very cool. Very Ooh. very cool stuff. And then lastly, I would say one of my absolute favorites. Um, have you read Black Sad? I have not read Black Sad. Ooh, man, it is beautiful. So um, it looks, I think it's. it was probably still um, uh, illustrated with um, watercolors. It looks like it anyway. Yeah. Tons of detail. And it's just this regular story, not regular story, this great kind of noir story mm -hmm. with like a lot of like grit and things going on in it um but everybody is an animal like everybody's just cast as an animal so it's like zootopia right but right. like way more like like real and cool and like yeah very very cool man i i think you would like it from from some of the stuff i've seen on your site and whatnot it seems like it might be something up your alley so you yeah, should check it out i will have Definitely. to check that out yeah one word black sad <laughs> that's awesome man that man that is some um, some of those times i haven't heard of there's only one that i've heard that you've mentioned i was like man it's, it's pretty interesting so i have to check yeah. those out yeah wild blue yonder i think it's very cool there's some cool stuff okay and so like okay now mm -hmm. here's here's the here's the critical question man yes when you were making your stuff man what yes. kept you motivated to finish yeah Whew. Um, so, it helps to have people relying on you. <laughs> so, it helps when you have that. When you don't have that, maybe it's good to find someone who is, because what, all, what a big turning point or a big thing that got me through was that my brother was relying on me to finish it mm -hmm. for the for his for the music project yeah so that we can give it to fans and so on so we set like a tentative soft release date kind of deal mm -hmm. and then um um for the physical copy but it was released online like page by page but for the physical he was like we need to have it done by then um so that helped it helped to, to motivate me that somebody else was involved in kind of relying on me and planning some other you know stuff around when that was going to happen right. um so that helps, but then, yeah, the biggest thing I would, it, it, I don't know. I think that, <laughs> um, I think just just doing it. It's tough to stay motivated. There's times when you won't be motivated at all, mm -hmm. um, and I think that going in every day or whenever you have planned, because I, I I was working this three days a week. And every single one of those days, I would just work it. And regardless of, of anything, mm -hmm. that was it. I would work that, and I would get as much done as I can. And then towards the end, I did end up, you know, working almost all, like, full-time on the whole thing, uh, trying to get everything wrapped up. But um, I would say what kept, I don't know, so what kept me motivated was just the will to push through and do it, I guess. And that's so tough because I feel like I, I want to, 
you know, say something that 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 is, you know, has has some insight into that. But I don't know if there is. No, but I I, 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 I think you you said it right there, man. Is a accountability, yeah. man. Like you <laughs> you had somebody that really was counting on you. That's really it, man. Yeah. And it, it, it's like you know when you have nobody like. It's it's already hard enough for people to keep accountable of themselves, but when somebody yes. else is like, "Yo, I need this," otherwise it's like all trust is broken. Like you know, forget it. You that's, know, I'll find somebody else. That's so true, man. I, I think you're right. I think that's that's really it. What got me that that was the tipping point. And I don't know. Uh, I might have pushed through if I didn't have that, but it might have taken a lot longer, and I might have switched over to another project for a while. Because <laughs> that's always the that's always the itch. It's like, oh wait, this something cool popped brand, up. Yeah, yeah, there's this brand new project. Yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> like I haven't gotten my dirty hands all over it. <laughs> it's so, true, right? We, we tend to yeah. be double minded, and so we were like, yes. okay, instead of just finishing what we started, we're like, yes. oh, something popped up. Let me let me dabble in that a little bit, you know, and then exactly. I'll go back. And dabble in that a little bit, you know, and, you're, you're... and you know what? Else? I would just say also, you know, the other big scary culprit is the, the I wouldn't say the complete redo, but you get to a point in a project where you're like, ah, you know what? If I redid like this much of it, it would be so much better, you know. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you know what? That that would be worth <laughs> it. It would be worth it for me to go back and recolor like Jeez. half of these pages. Yeah, and I it's would like, just say, don't, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> just finish it. Just, like, just, just put it out there, and you know, you yes. never know. Like people will just gravitate. You know, people who gravitate to it gravitate to it. You know, and those yes. who don't, that's okay. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. No. So I think having someone relying on you is 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 very very. Very, very good for motivation. Man, that, that, that's, a, that's a really, really good point, honestly, uh, Hayne. So um, here, here's another question for you, man. Another curveball. Yes. What is something you wish someone had told you before you got started on this path? Wow. Um, okay, yeah. Um, I wish that some of my teachers in school or somebody told me that whatever they taught you to do in school doesn't really matter. Ooh. No. What you learn is important. What the skills you attain, mm -hmm. the the you know the time you put in. That's not only is that important. That is essential. And and yeah, uh, you, that that is what makes you the artist you are. Is the the, the time you put into something. So right. and school is where that starts. But mm -hmm. there are so many times where I felt like. I was trying to do what teachers had taught me to do, mm -hmm. and it was holding me back so much. It was so it was it was <laughs> it was like oh these are the rules like this is no I need this to look a certain way I need you know the, mm -hmm. the composition to work I need the value to work mm -hmm. and when you let go of some of that stuff and that's what what I've started doing um, it's amazing one you feel better about your work yeah and there's more to explore. All of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, like I don't, I'm not constrained by like what my teachers thought were good art. I can now do any art and, and just see what happens. So that's what I would say. I would say definitely that I wish somebody had told me, yes, use the time in school, but don't take your teacher's advice so seriously because they have their own biases and they have their own art that they're doing. So you got to do your art. And I think that that's very important. So. Man, that, them is some critical points, man. It's it's basically it, no, it's, it's basically, you know, yes, you know, take in what you've heard, but synthesize your own stuff yes. and just create, and don't worry about how it's going to be perceived, man. As long as you're good with it, man, that's all yes. that really matters, man. It's just absolutely, absolutely, and that's a very, it's a very tough mindset to maintain, especially in the commercial world where so so where I'm doing art for for other people and clients and all these things, that's a time when you, you, you have to take input, you have to Correct. be open and Correct. everything, but you're right. When it's something that you feel passionate about and you're doing it and it's your work, you should really, you know, um, open yourself up to, to seeing what happens rather than, you know, force, force, forcing it into something that you think. Right, you know, because it, it puts a lid on you, right? You know, and you, you, you want to lift the lid, you know, especially when it's your project, man. You want to you want to be as open yes. as possible and just yes. let the creative juices flow, so to speak, yes. like they say, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow, that, them is, them is, you know, I wish, you know, somebody had told me that as well, right? You know, 
Um, <laughs> Me too. That's, that's why I'm saying it. Absolutely. Yeah, because you know, it's just it's just one of those things. Like you know, I'm worried about you know this is what they told me, so I have to put it in the box. And it's just yeah. like we always want to put things in boxes. Like it's just human nature that we just got to put things in boxes. Like oh, that's that type of thing. So that's that type of art. So we're placed in that box, you know, or such and such, you know, this box, you know, it's it's don't do that to yourself. You know, people are already going to do that already for you. So yeah. open the lid up for yourself, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the big, one big thing I was taught, and this is one of the, just an example of this is, um, I was very much taught to, um, create real, really defined value separation. So having like a foreground, a middle ground, a background and, and a, somewhere where you can really feel the space in the image. Mm-hmm. Um, and, that was exhausting. And then when I started saying like, you know what, like let's flatten some of this out. Let's like, let's make it a little bit more graphic. Um, things really started opening up, you know? So, uh, I would just, yeah, yeah. That's just an example of, of exactly that at work. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So, <laughs> uh, what, 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 tell the fans a little bit about, the projects that you got coming up, the, what's in the pipeline, and tell us a little bit about the story that you've created. Absolutely. So, um, Vienna, Vienna Isaac's Adventures is, um, it's a sort of, it's a very fast-paced um, comic book um, mm-hmm. told in, in, in the voice of a 1940s radio show. Hmm. Um, so that, that that's, um, and, and it follows... Vian and Hein, um, who are these like adventure explorer kind of artist brothers, which is exactly what me and my brother kind right, of I, are. Yeah, yeah, maybe okay. Not, maybe not so much adventurers. I mean, I wish we could get out you know, and, and see some more nature. But um, nonetheless, so it, it follows them uh, through this... It, it, it kind of follows them on their journey and without giving too much away, mm-hmm, there's fine. a lot of twists and turns and... Um, and and it goes into different kind of almost I, I want to say ridiculous, but in a good way, like directions. <laughs> all these ridiculous directions that 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 um, all kind of end up tying together in the end. So um, it's it's also about them. So so the pitch really is is that they go into the Arctic. Um, that they're commissioned to explore the Arctic, and then they run into these zebras in the Arctic, and uh, um, and this whole mystery starts as to why there are these zebras and what is going on here. Um, so it's, but, um, the thing is, is it's very tongue in cheek. It's very self-referential and it's very kind of like, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of sarcasm and some, some, some things in there. Um, so that's sort of the, the pitch for the comic book. Um, and, um, what we have coming up next. So the first adventure is a, completely standalone, you know, uh, one shot almost, you know, you can read the whole thing, you get everything from it. It references some stuff in Vian's music, but it, you can read it all on your own and, 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 uh, uh yeah, and, and enjoy it hopefully. Um, and then, but then what's in the pipeline is possibly some more adventures that they have together. Ooh, um, okay. Each one very much, still told in the style of this 1940s radio show, um, but diving in deeper into the minutia of what they end up discovering, which which has a lot to do with physics and space and time mm-hmm. and all this stuff. So, um, so uh, yeah, that's that's in the pipeline. That's one thing that's kind of, that's, that's in the pipeline. Okay. Um, the next is um, we just did a comic book for another uh, one of the um, artists on the label. Okay. Her name is Through Juniper Vale. Okay. Um, you can check that out. That's on Instagram. We dropped the whole comic on Instagram, so mm-hmm. it kind of makes use of Instagram's how the images can run together if mm-hmm. you like put them right next to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was actually written by the artist through Juniper Vale, and uh, um, and I just illustrated it and. We are also, that was kind of quick enough where we're planning to do a couple more of those. Um, and that, that just kind of, again, it follows, her concept is all about home. So mm. it follows her character searching for home and okay. what home means. So there's more of that coming in the works and a print version of, it, of that is also coming in the works. So that's the immediate sort of okay. um, thing. 
But if I can just paint you a picture of the overall goal of all of this. Okay. So the end goal of all this and what we have planned is to have all of these comic books very much in the same way, and this is so comic book, uh, so uh, uh, is um, very much in the same way Marvel has it and DC and all those people, to have these comic book projects that are very focused on music and like kind of the power of music in our lives um, run together simultaneously in the same world. Ooh. And then, yeah, and then when the artists end up working together on collaborations or mashups or anything like that, have them meet in the comic book stories as well. Ooh! And yeah, and have like certain certain issues where through Juniper Vale and Vian Isaac are you know there together solving some of the same problems while making music together. Um, um, so so the plan is for all this to kind of be in a shared universe um, that that where someone can read these stories about these musical artists, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and how, you know, and, and these fantastical stories and escape through them while also being in tune with some of the music they're making and then those two things matching up and kind of like bouncing off of each other. So that's, that's the, the larger vision of, of where we want to take this whole thing. Ooh, man, that sounds <laughs> so cool, man. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I know, I know you're super excited, man. That sounds really cool, man. And I saw, I saw a lot of the images that you know, just what you've been posting on Twitter, and man, those look great, man. So, oh, thank you. Plus, thank you plus the music. I, I'm feeling the music, man. It's cool, man. Yeah, check check out the music. It's it's, it's awesome. So, and okay, so tell us what were some of the like rough patches, or what was the hardest rough patch that you had to get through, mm. you know, on this journey. That's such a good question. Um, so I would say, and I just want to, that's a great question. I want to thank you again for having me on the, on the show. <laughs> this is really, really nice. So. No problem, um, man. So I would say the hardest patch um, was definitely, and this is um, kind of fitting, um, was around the maybe 90, 85 to 90% um, mark um almost being done mm -hmm. with, with, with the comic. Mm -hmm. So um, I was working in this style that I had been working in for a long time, but it's a very, very meticulous um, style where everything is shaded. So all the forms are shaded um, in and the lighting is very considered. Um, and you can see that throughout the comic. Um, so I was working in that style and it worked so well. And in the beginning, I love it, you know, and it was so great. Um, but it would take me so, so long. And um, and me being who I am, I, I kind of like love detail and clutter. So I like keep putting a bunch of stuff in it. And then in my mind, I was like, I now I need to shade in all this stuff. So it got to a point where it was taking too long mm -hmm. and it was and it was tough. And yeah. and the fun parts were done. So. The story, I wrote the story, and that was immense fun. And then, you know, paneling the whole thing out, like, oh, my gosh, like, you're thinking about composition, you're, mm -hmm. like, making stuff up as you go. Right. Then the line work is really fun, too, because you're in there and you're, right. you're, 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 you're getting to kind of define these forms. Right. And then for the first part, like I said, the shading was fun. Mm -hmm. But then it just got, it was like, I know what this is supposed to look like. Why do I need to, you know, like finish it? <laughs> like, right, right. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, it was just grueling. And um, that's when, and this is, I would, this is another thing I would say is, is ask for help. Because mm. that's when I got one of my friends, Naomi Bethel, um, who's, who's still a student here, um, to help me out with some of the shading. And she didn't have she, she did an absolutely fantastic job like it was amazing mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so so um so and the best part is but she had to like mimic my style which is something that that i've you know like kind of grown into for the, for the past couple of years and she did a great job um of that and then all i had to kind of do was go back and 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 kind of like bolster up some of the work she'd done and it was so once i did that so i would say for the last little push, um, I, 
got her involved, and that was a saving grace, man. Like, because I was, I was just struggling. I was dying mm-hmm. and just really struggling to get through all, all the panels that I needed to get through in a day. So, so yeah, that's that. That was definitely the hardest part. And again, it was finishing. That that was it. it was <laughs> right. Finishing it. And now I've learned so much and learned to when you commit to a style in the beginning of your comic. Stick to know it. that you're going to have to do that throughout. So that's the, that's something I've learned. And to now define a style that has a quicker workflow or something that, that you can, you know, Turn that you won't get quick. so bogged down by. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, that, that, them, them, is, them is actually words of wisdom, man. So, <laughs> no, no, I'm serious because, like, when you need help, man, I mean, yes. it, it's, it's critical to either ask somebody or, you know, otherwise you're going to be a sinking ship, man. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I think that um, I suffer from that pretty heavily. Um, uh, a lot of times I've got a little bit too much pride. I would, I think my brother would say I've got a lot of too much pride. But um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so asking for help, um, it, it just opens up so much more too because it, one, it gets you involved with great artists too. And, and you know, that's always a great thing. So you get help, and yeah, not even on the art side. Ask for help <laughs> on, on anything. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if you just need help on on how to panel something, or, or even even just like getting the right paper to print on, you know, definitely ask for help. Yeah, that that that's so true, man. And um, man, this is gonna be the final question, man. It's just yeah, absolutely. What are some last words of wisdom that you would like to impart on the family? Um, for future artists, you know, you know, future creators and just, you know, what are the last words of wisdom you like to impart on them? Yeah, um, I would say, and, and I feel like people get this a lot, but I would just say, do it, just do it. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever you're thinking, whatever you're working on, go and do it. And also, when you're doing it, Give yourself grace and don't try to let it be perfect because that's 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 a road to nowhere. If you just let go and you say, you know what, I'm going to do this and, and not want it to be exactly how I want it to be and just do it because it need, it, I want it to be done, then then that's a winning, winning attitude. Um, that's what I would say. That's at least what I've learned um, because I think I was on the other side of that for a long time, mm-hmm. wanting things to be perfect and also, yeah, uh, d- having all these ideas and not implementing them. So once you have an idea and you co- and you want it, you want to do it, commit to it and find time every day to sit down and do it. Um, that's the only way to kind of get anything done that you want, if, 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 that you want, you know, to get done in the art, in the art world, so. That, that's that's what I would say. Man. Yeah, and go ahead, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just be be good to yourself. Give yourself grace, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> That, that, that's, that, that, that's awesome man no like um no we really do appreciate those you know words of like you know affirmation and encouragement yeah. um all those things are very applicable man and it's so true man because you can i don't know like you can be so hard on yourself and not Absolutely. give you enough grace and you can just be you know stuck in the idea and, and you know you, mm-hmm. you know in theory but you know it really doesn't do anything until you actually take action right so yeah yeah and just go to work you know because you know that this this is the this is the year of the doing man like this is not the year of the thinking man it's the year of the doing man that's right that's right so but man you know we really do appreciate you taking the time out man um we appreciate you talking to the family giving your perspective on your journey and providing us motivation you know (laughs) and so where can the people and the family find more of your work Absolutely. So um, you can go to Vonic Media, which let me spell that out. It's V-O-H-N-I-C mm-hmm. Media dot com. Um, all my art is up there, um, demo reels, all kinds of stuff I've done. Um, but then you should also go to Vian Isaac dot com, okay. which is V-I-A-N-I-Z-A-K, Isaac with a Z, A-K dot mm-hmm. com. Okay. Um, and that's where you can find uh, the comic. You can find it in a web comic format. You can um, where we just got the 
uh, physical copies in, so we're launching the store uh, coming up next week. Hey. So you'll be able to order um, a physical copy um, to look at. Um, yeah, so that's those are kind of my two my two zones. Um, and lastly, you can follow me on Instagram, which is um, my name, just is at Heinzaman, which is H E I N Z A A Y M A N. So yeah. Hey, hey Joe, Joe, that's I awesome. I want to say thank you to you for having me on the show and for being so awesome and asking such great questions and letting me, um, um, yeah, letting letting me express some of my s- s- little opinions about what I've found in the art world. So thank you for that, man. Hi, I appreciate the you know the affirmations again, man. Like I said, the the honor is mine because, like I said, man, we just want everybody to know that. You're not alone, and there's other mm. people who have gone through the same journey. I mean, even yeah. I go through that journey, you know, right? Yeah. And it's just you gotta, you know, have people surround you and just, you know, provide that, you know, hope, you know, that motivation, like just, you know, go do it, man. You got this, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, but no, we appreciate it, you know. And so, um, Master My Family, I'm your host JoJo, and this is gonna do it for Artist Motivation. Stay tuned for the next episode.